Yeah, thank you so much. I wish I could be there in person. I am um, about two weeks out from my book being done, and hopefully, I'll have you know be more free to cross the bay. Yeah, I feel like I'm a little cross-eyed. I've been editing all day today, and my eyes <laughs> crisscross. But it's good to be here with you. And uh, let's go ahead and arouse our bodhicitta for our evening. If you wish, you can take the bodhicitta mudra, the mudra of single-pointed equipoise with the two fingers pointing up, the rest of the fingers crisscrossed like my eyes. <laughs> this symbolizes the single-pointed intention to awaken for the benefit of all beings everywhere, this bodhicitta. Make a heartfelt personal prayer. Thank you. So I thought I would talk a little bit about the book that we're reading and move us deeper into the healing meditations, and then we'll do the practice. And um, so the book, for those of you who might not know, we're, we're working through this book called Boundless Healing, Meditation Exercises to Enlighten the Mind and Heal the Body by Tolku Tundup. And uh, we've been slowly making our way through that, at least when I'm uh, with you. And I hope that, that you find it helpful and an interesting perspective on how we can use our mind and our meditation to bring about healing in a, in a conscious way. I certainly have been benefiting from this. I, I enjoy it. I've read his other books back when I, actually when I was living in India in 1996-97, and I really enjoyed his his writings on the kind of spiritual tra tradition of Tibet, the lineage teachers, uh, great masters of old, uh, a real consummate practitioner, scholar, well-respected um, Tibetan lama who um, has really made it his life's work to develop meditation for healing. So uh, last time we did the practice, we worked through a body scan, not the kind you would do at a Goenka retreat or Vipassana retreat, but uh, similar in nature in that we worked from, I believe, we, yeah, we worked from the top of the head perhaps, and we scanned our way down through our torso and our arms as a way to get more intimate with the body and its structure, its, um, its uh, anatomy and its circulation and the function of the lymph and the blood vessels, the heart, the lungs, and so on. And I think that a lot of us found that that, that type of meditation was like a shamatha meditation and that it it's an anchor. It anchors our attention in the body, which is harder than it sounds. Usually we want to fantasize or the mind is used to drifting off in all different directions. So we can think of these practices also as a form of cultivating concentration as well as, well as healing. And so... In chapter five, he talks about um, encouraging our meditation practice, and he gives some tips for ways to um, avoid the pitfalls or help us to overcome resistance. And I thought it would be nice to share some of these foundational ideas, because not all of us have been practicing for all that long. And it's really helpful to learn about the tips that have helped the old yogis, you know, in India and Tibet. And so I'll just spend a little bit of time talking about these, these tips on how to be more comfortable, be more at ease, and be more happy in our meditation practice. So I'm, I'm reading from chapter five, which is page 57 of the book. And this is a nice preliminary for the healing meditation that we'll do. So he talks about our posture. The first one is to sit in a way that feels comfortable to you. That's something that even I always encourage you to do. The most important thing is to have the spine straight, more or less, but not rigid. A natural S-curve that helps distribute the weight 
of the spine and the torso is very important. Um, the main point is so that your breathing is also unimpeded. It said when the body is straight, that the breath can be more free, more fluid. And when the breath is more fluid and free, then the prana flows more freely. So all of those three, the body, uh, the breath, and the mind are interrelated. So if you're sitting in a chair, this is important. And I know that it's not always emphasized because we, we I can't see you necessarily. But if you do meditate in a chair, make sure to sit more forward towards the front edge of the seat and have your feet flat on the floor. That helps to avoid a slouching, caving in of the, the lungs, the ribcage, and a rounding or slouching of the lower back. So it also helps us adopt a posture of vigilance, not in a sense of tension or of tightness, but of alertness. Because in meditation, we're cultivating clarity, concentration, um, and trying to avoid cultivating qualities like dullness. <clears throat> it also helps us to feel grounded when your feet are flat on the, on the ground. It helps us to feel connected to the earth. Um, what he says is it's beneficial to not lean against a, a wall or the back of a chair if you don't have to. Because again, it helps you stay more alert and build those muscles to help you sit up straight on your own. But if you need to, that's fine. He also says, don't put anything on your lap. I had never heard this before. It's just these little tips that can help us with details. He says that if you have something on your lap, it might cause subtle distraction, like a cat. <laughs> don't put your cat on your lap. <laughs> Cats can be very distracting, I know firsthand. Uh, Okay. And then he says to decide whether or not you're going to practice with your eyes open or closed. And this is something we've talked a fair amount about in past class classes. He's saying in general, uh, it, it's a rule of thumb that it's better to meditate with your eyes open if you can. Um, and if so, that's with the eyes gazing slightly down past the level of the nose towards the floor and relax the muscles around and behind the eyes and let the eyes be, in a sense, sometimes the texts say vacant, which sounds funny, like you're spacing out, but it's not a space outlook where you glaze over, but there's a softness to the vision. But, and that's especially if you have some experience meditating, but if you're newer to meditation, or if you're in a room where there's movement or other busy kind of visual stimuli, then it's absolutely fine to close your eyes might be more appropriate, easier for you to meditate with your eyes closed in certain settings. So it's good to be flexible with yourself. And then, of course, relax. Relax your muscles. If you feel tense, slowly and gently, you can relax them by actually tensing up for a moment, like tensing up your fist and then consciously relaxing your muscles. So sometimes we say to like, we often hold sh tension in the shoulders, right? So it can be helpful to shrug the shoulders as we can all try this. Shrug the shoulders up to your ears and then let them drop down. Shrug up and then let them drop, right? Sometimes we do this move of where you inhale, you raise the hands, and then exhale, flop, let the hands flop. I couldn't do it because my desk is in the way, but it's like a flop on your lap. It's kind of like, and that helps you. Yeah, try it. It helps you feel that settling, like the bundle of straw. The string has been cut and it naturally just collapses, falls, aligned with gravity. So that's the feeling. And enjoy that feeling, the relief from tightness and so on. And then he addresses the breath. Now, some of you might be yogis. You might have learned pranayama techniques. Often in Buddhist meditation, when especially when we're doing mindfulness practices like we do, whether it's settling the mind in its natural state, settling the breath and the body in their natural states, or mindfulness of breathing, we're aware of the breath, but we're not controlling the breath. And that's very important because with mindfulness, what we're trying to develop is the quality of openness and a capacity to be with experience no matter what that experience is. So whether the breath is short, 
deep, long, shallow. We're with it. We're not trying to fix. Um, and we're letting go of that type of always manipulating or always trying to make something better, or the improvement job. We're actually trying to let that go a bit. So we um, practice a natural breath, he says. Um, he says your relaxation can be deeper if you relax your stomach muscles so that the breath comes freely from the area of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is that area between the lungs and the abdomen. And it's it's an interesting um, shape. The, the abdominal diaphragm is like an upside down umbrella. And when we, um, when we breathe in, it closes and draws the lungs down. So we can all try that. Let's exhale completely. And then with the in breath, feel the lungs expanding downward and you might even sense this diaphragm is drawing down. And then with the exhalation, it's the opposite effect. The diaphragm opens and moves up to help push the air out. So that's that area right um, below the rib cage. And that's the abdominal diaphragm that helps uh, the lungs and the breath to um, find its natural rhythm. So if we're tight there, it can hinder the breath. And likewise, if you have a belt or your pants are tight, you can always loosen them. Always try to have a loose belt line so that your abdomen can relax out. You don't need to hold the belly in. Let that go. <clears throat> and then also the mouth. And he's reiterating the way that, that I learned uh, to work with the mouth. It's interesting, you know, breathing through the nose is, is the common instruction, and that's good. But you can also relax, and what he says is to relax the mouth. And you can even let the mouth be a little open while you're still breathing through the nose. It's a way to let the jaw go slack, the tension that we hold so often in the jaw, to relax, relax the muscles of the face. So the lips can be slightly parted. Space between the upper and lower molars, I often say that. I even find, maybe you've noticed this, but just a natural intuitive thing that I actually kind of close. Sometimes there's a natural clothing, closing of the air passage of the throat so that the breath moves through the nose, in and out through the nose. But don't force that. It's something I've just noticed that happens to me naturally. I don't know if it's important or if it matters. But he says, breathing techniques vary according to the purpose of your meditation, whether it's to foster a contemplative state or to encourage the movement of energy. Mostly, you are interested in natural, relaxed breathing that promotes a calm mind. So essentially, that reiterates what I just said. We're not doing pranayama. We're practicing mindfulness of breathing and finding a natural rhythm that's going to be different for all of us. Now, if the breath feels stiff or tight, uncomfortable, while you're meditating, he gives some tech, he gives some options. He says the first option is to concentrate more on two aspects of the breathing, the inhalation and the exhalation, with the inhalations shorter and the exhalations longer. And that's true. That studies have shown that the longer exhalation creates more of a parasympathetic response, a relaxation response in the body. So you could kind of count, you could do three counts for the in-breath, four, five, or six counts for the out-breath. Find a ratio that works for you. So this is a little bit of pranayama, but this is because you're trying to apply an antidote to the issue of um, discomfort during breathing. So you wouldn't do this the whole practice. You would do this as long as you need it. So that's one, lengthening the exhalation in a natural, easeful way. He says you can also count the breaths. We often do that where we'll count either from 1 to 10, which is common in the Zen tradition, or 1 to 21, which is common in the Dzogchen Tibetan tradition. And he says this can release tension and help to free up the breathing. He also says if your breathing is feeling constricted, 
Now bring your awareness to the feeling of the breaths being held back or blocked. Um, and don't try to do anything about it, but just be in touch with that feeling. Then exhale a deep breath and think and feel that the constriction is entirely cleared and all blockages are totally blown away, like unclogging a faucet. Feel and believe that your breathing is now moving naturally. So that can be interesting too. Every once in a while you might need to like that. But I would recommend do that when you're on your own. Don't do, do that too much when you're meditating in a group because it can be distracting. And one tip technique I would like to add is that you can lie down. I went through a period of time where I had a lot of discomfort and tightness in my abdomen. And whenever the teacher would say, now breathe into your abdomen and relax tension, it would get worse. <laughs> and this went on for months. And finally, I realized I, I just have to lie down. So one time I lay down and suddenly the whole apparatus, the breathing apparatus relaxed. I could feel my belly, the abdomen, the diaphragm relax. And I retrained myself to feel that relaxed state in the breathing so that then now ever since then actually my breathing is fine and I don't I was almost having like little panic attacks when I was trying to breathe not that that might be dramatic overly dramatic but some anxiety coming up and some tension and discomfort so again lying down is an option if you like okay so I'll leave it there feels like it's a good time to practice so what we're going to do is do a practice of uh, visualizing um, light in the cells of our body. So please go ahead and get comfortable, start to shift into a meditative mode. We'll start with some time with shamatha, settling the mind in its natural state. And then like before, we'll shift into the healing meditation, visualization. We'll sit for about, um, let's see about 45 minutes total. So take a comfortable seat, one that you can hold with relative stillness. And that's either upright or lying down in the supine position. Remember the trick, if you're lying down, you can just make a right angle with one of your arms, the forearm being perpendicular to the floor, the fingers relaxed, align it with gravity. And then if you fall asleep, the arm will just fall over and wake you up. It's good not to fall asleep. Okay. So finding a comfortable position, making sure you're warm, your notifications are turned off. The cat is locked out of the bedroom. Unless it's a meditative cat. Okay. Allow the eyes to close. We'll begin with the eyes closed. And begin by taking some deep breaths. And simply beginning to turn inward to come home to the feeling of being with the breath in the body, being in the moment. Notice if there are any tension in, held in the body. You can draw the breath into any areas of tension. And with the out breath, feel that tension melting down into the earth beneath you. Then bringing to mind the point of points that were shared, the eyes, the mouth, the muscles of the face. If you wish, you can bring the shoulders up around the ears and then relax with an exhalation and let them fall away from the ears. If 
feel the diaphragm responding to the in-breath, drawing down. The diaphragm responding to the out-breath, drawing up. The feeling is like you're pouring water into a vase with the in-breath, filling the torso from the base to the top. And then with the out-breath, pouring water out of the vase from the top to the base. Bring the tip of the tongue to rest against the upper palate. And relax the root of the tongue down towards the heart. The lips gently parted, but the breath, if possible, breathing in and out of the nose. Relax the muscles of the face throat, the back of the neck, the shoulder blades releasing down the back towards the kidneys, and the kidneys releasing down towards the sits bones, towards the earth. The back, side, and front of the abdominal region, the low back, that whole belt line is soft, Welcoming the breath as it flows in, releasing the breath as it flows out. And we'll spend some time with the gatis, these phrases that the Buddha taught for mindfulness of breathing. Spend about 10 minutes with each one. I'll introduce them and then leave you in silence to practice them on your own. So the first one is about attending to the whole body. So the phrase goes, attending to the whole body, I breathe in. Attending to the whole body, I breathe out. Attending to the whole body, I breathe in. Attending to the whole body, I breathe out. From the crown to the soles to the periphery of the skin, you may feel the texture of the warmth, the flow, the coolness, the stagnancy and the fluidity, tightness, the openness. You're simply attending to the body, the whole body, releasing distraction with the out-breath, training the mind to stay, to stay to stay, attending to the whole body, I breathe in, attending to the whole body, I breathe out, releasing distraction, appreciating the miracle of mindfulness when you realize you've been lost in thought and come back with a light touch, no shame, no blame, just be in the moment returning again and again, attending to the whole body, breathe in, attending to the whole body, breathe out. Thus one trains.
Okay, so now let's switch gears into the visualization practice. Allowing the eyes to be either closed or open as you wish. Your body is not just made of bones or flesh, organs wrapped in skin, but it's composed of trillions of cells. And each part of your body is made of billions and billions of cells, individual cells. The cells are the building blocks of your body. They have all kinds of shapes and colors and qualities. And most cells are a unit surrounded by a cell wall, filled with fluid and holding various structures inside of them. So visualize in whatever way allows your mind to feel as if it is in touch with this vast array of cells. To make the interior of each cell more vivid and vital, you can see and think of each cell as having the qualities of earth, water, fire, and air. And these qualities dwell in the open interior space of each cell. The earth might be the plasm, the membranes. The water would be the fluid. The fire might be any sort of HTP or metabolism or heat, movement. The air might be the mobility of the fluids and tissues within that cell. And they're all held within the space around the cell and within the cell. So with your mind's eye, see the cells of your body part by part slowly and gently, and beginning with your head, and gradually move on to the other parts of the body slowly. So we'll begin at the crown of the head, the scalp, the skin, the bone, and the brain itself, slowly feeling the billions of cells that make up all of these different tissues within the body, the blood, lymph, moisture, the fluids. And gradually moving down into the neck, the throat, just feeling the infinite number of small cells in the body. And moving down into the chest, you can feel the cells within the lungs, the heart, the bones, the ribs, the muscles, the skin. It's taking your time. And flowing down into the middle of the torso, the mid-back, the diaphragm. Billions of individual cells making up who you are, your body. Down into the abdomen, the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, the stomach, the intestines. 
the ovaries, the uterus, Like little pins or pricks of light, these cells are infinite. Down into the genitals, the bowl of the pelvis, the sacrum. The anus, the hips, the bones, the sockets, the cartilage, the tendons, everything made up by billions of tiny little cells. And keep flowing down like a gentle movement of honey pouring down through the body. Your awareness flows into the upper legs. Many cells and every tissue, the legs, the bones, the femur, the marrow, the blood. The skin, the hair, everything made of cells. And flowing down into the knees. And the lower legs. to the ankles, into the feet, And then back up to the shoulders again and work your way down to the upper arms. Like a Syrah painting, the little in size, shapes of light and color and energy, These little cells down through the elbows. Into the lower arms. And into the fingers palms, fingernails, you can think of one or two cells and then imagine that you're seeing a vast number of cells, even billions, and really feel and believe that you're seeing and sweeping the view of the infinite cells making up the parts of the body. from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet, feel a global awareness of the infinite number of cells within your body. And feel like you're not making this up, that your mind is actually touching the infinite cells in their many different and individual shapes, colors, and designs.
Feel that your body is a collection of trillions of individual and distinctive cells, like a statue made of trillions of grains with various shapes, colors, and qualities. And now visualize that these cells are cells of light. And see this light is shining with different colors like a rainbow. Feel as though radiant light were blossoming in each cell and throughout your body, bringing health and healing to each cell. Slowly visualize light in every part of your body and even in all the cells within each part. See the cells of light as colorful, bright, translucent, insubstantial, and radiant. From head to toe, again sweeping through the body and visualizing each part of the body filled with light, a rainbow light, each cell, particularly focusing on areas that may need more love, more light, places of illness or injury, or feeling stuck, disconnected. Feel the rainbow light in every cell within you. Now look at your whole body. And your body is composed of trillions of amazingly bright and colorful individual cells, like a bottle filled with grains of various shapes, colors, and qualities. And all the cells of your body are radiant with bright, translucent, and tangible light. And feel this healing light is shining forth throughout your whole body. This luminous display is taking place in billions of cells within your infinite body and shining or blossoming forth like flowers.
Bring your awareness to the insubstantial quality of light, which heals without limits, restrictions, or pressures. Enjoy the feeling of having a body of light. And relax in this feeling of freedom and peacefulness without grasping at it or analyzing it. Rest for a few more moments before closing. Now we'll bring our session to a close. Just letting go of all effort, visualization, and just spend about three to five breaths just being in the moment again, practicing non-meditation. Just be. And then we'll close with a dedication of merit, any positive energy that we've cultivated together here tonight. As a community of practitioners, may it be of benefit to beings near and far, seen and unseen, friend and foe. Feel this merit spreading out in all directions. The jinlap, the blessing waves, like the sound of the bell radiating out, filling all of space. Thank you, everybody. Let's come back together.
in case you want to know the page number for the meditations we did. Uh, we started as on page 83, and we did the first part, and then we jumped to the second part. I combined two visualizations. We combined with the, the, the infinite cells with the cells of light. Those are two different ones. You can do them together. The second one started at 86. 85 and 86, yeah, no, 83 and 86, okay, so then you can read that, take take that uh, and use it whenever you like, or you can listen to the recording, this guided meditation, if you want to be taken through with my voice and do the meditation again. It's on the YouTube channel, just like the other ones are. So you can always access those again if there are particular guided practices that you like, that you want to do again. You can always do those on your own time. So, How was that for you? We can have discussion, questions, comments. I apologize for the long, uh, quiet segment at the beginning. I mean, that's probably was unnoticeable for most of you. I muted myself to cough, and then I couldn't unmute myself. So it took us a little while to figure that out. But Okay. So you can either raise your hand in the digital room or in the physical room or chat in a question in the chat. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. No problem. We'll work it out. Um, how, was, how could you feel the cells? Did that feel healing for you? And then when we brought the light in, and this is a foundation for other light-based practices. He, he, we use light in many different ways within Buddhist meditation, visualizing, sending light, receiving light, light in various parts of the body and our different chakra systems. Um, so light, is it's a good thing to get used to visualizing light in the body. So I love the rainbow light, too. So we really are made of rainbow light. They say that the light, the five lights of the rainbow, I don't know if well, there's more in the rainbow, there's purple and or maybe orangish, but um, in the mandala structure, you know, in tantric vision, there's the five lights of blue, white, gold, or yellow, red, and green. And those are expressions of the five elements. So there's something to that. Because we we're made of elements, we're made of light. Good, Jason loved it. Mace, thank you. Mace says, "Yes, amazing." So, Alice, is that is that slang? <laughs> no, I'm sure you tried to say nice, <laughs> maybe alive. That's what you tried to say. So alive. Thanks, Melissa. I, I'd like to comment on something, Chandra. Yes, please, Jason. Um, I was driving through the uh, so near Sebastopol this weekend. And I was so amazed by the color of the leaves. It's not something that we see so much in San Francisco, but I'm sure in Berkeley it's it's quite beautiful. But it was just so vibrant, and the the November light yeah. was cast in such a way that it just caught everything. Everything was shining, and it's that light that I'm imagining. Mm -hmm. uh, and it it also made me realize that the uh, the color of the, the leaves is shifting as it's losing chloroform and so it's like it's it's fading from its vibrant living state to death in a cycle but it's yeah. showing this incredible spectrum and it's just like it just blew my mind i was imagining all my cells having that relationship to light mm. like sort of flaring and having vibrancy and then kind of almost like pulsing with light mm -hmm. in a life death kind of, i don't know i was just really using that as a model 
sort of natural, yeah. not, not necessarily. It's just like that really bright, those reds and yellows is just stunning. It's true. And the light in the Bay Area has been spectacular these last uh, week or two. There's something about the color of the sky, the clarity of the sky, the stars as well. Yeah, and the sunsets. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Jason. Yeah. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Nice seeing you. Um, I had meditated before with light, but I had and always like I I used to, I've, I've I'm used to thinking of light coming into my body, like from the outside, from yeah. like white light coming inside me, especially mm -hmm. through the crown of the head. But, um, and, and that being like very healing. But today was the first time that I even, I had never thought about light coming from the inside of my body. Mm -hmm. So like the cells, like vibrating with light was just, it was beautiful. I it, it it gave me a different. It gave me a lot of energy while I was meditating, which was uh, very healing in a way. Like it gave me um, a sense of uh, everything. Uh, like like how how can I say like cleaning cleaning mm -hmm. cleaning my body something like that. So yeah. it was beautiful. Thank you. Mm, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I, I feel the same way. Yeah, my experience with light is more like you, you know, where it's flowing in through the crown or into my heart, whether it's white light or rainbow light, this was coming from the inside and it felt different. It did feel energizing in a different kind of way. And, and how did the infinity, you know, the billions and billions of cells, how did those that feel too, in terms of specks of light or patterns of light curious how that felt to you that countless texture yeah it, it was mind-blowing i can't <laughs> explain it <laughs> good that's what we want right that's good for meditation to blow our minds thank you thanks for sharing that yeah hey Chandra. Yes, who's this? Oh. Hi. It's Karen. Karen, hi. hi. Um, I thank you. That was really beautiful. I was really excited to do the light meditation and I had a similar experience. I thought it was very energizing and kept me awake and it felt very healing and cleaning. And I think the part I struggled with was like the number, just like the trillions. I just I don't think I could get them all going at one time. So I just yeah. sort of had to like piece them together and be like, oh, now I'm done here over here. So it was really hard to yeah think about all those cells, like the sheer number of it. Was... But other than that, it was really beautiful. So thank you. And I, I had the same thing. And really I actually nice to feel connected. Great. Go Good. He did say, and I, I, I said it, later maybe too late in the in the arc where he says actually start by visualizing visualizing one or two cells and then as that it grows you can build and make it more infinite um, maybe that would be easier karen maybe in terms of and he actually provides a picture of a cell you can even go online and look at cells right i do a little homework where is that picture? This one's just a simple line drawing. He's got funny, he's got helpful, but kind of funny little drawings in this book. But so he provides a picture of a cell so that you have some kind of anchor to visualize. So it's a funny looking cell, isn't it? It looks like it's got hair. Maybe we have some biologists in the room. I don't know what those are. Yes, who's next? I see Melissa's comment, relationship between Vajrasattva, yes, and this practice. This feels better in some ways, cleaning myself with light. Right, for those who don't know Vajrasattva practice, it's a 
wonderful and very common uh, purification visualization done in Tibetan Buddhism, where often you visualize the Buddha of white light above you, or even in Yabyum, in union with the uh, consort, and uh, nectar flows down from them into the crown of your head and cleanses you. So it's like a white nectar cleansing you. And, and all the impurities leave your orifices, the palms, the soles of your feet through uh, like visualizing smoke, uh, also like scorpions and snakes and insects, leaving your body, all the impurities leaving your body in that way. And then once you're completely cleansed, then you fill from the bottom to the top with that nectar light and you become like a balloon, like a body of light. And then it goes on from there. It's one of my favorite meditations, actually. He's one of my main deities. So um, I'm used to that practice. And I, so I always like visualizing light. It reminds me of Vajrasattva. Um, so there were similarities and differences, like Melissa said. Yeah, it's kind of a cleansing. It has that cleansing effect. Uh, Maria, the trees are actually pulling in all of that color light and storing it in their own cells to protect them from the cold temperatures of winter. Oh, like antifreeze. And then they release them in the spring to make more solar panels to gather more light. Oh, the trees are magical with light. Maybe our cells are a little like the cells in the trees in our magical relationship to light. Oh, okay. That is really cool. Thank you, Maria, for sharing that. Mm. So interesting. Who's next? Anyone else in the in the room? It's nice to see the room full of people. How did that feel to practice together? I know Eve's told me that when she comes in person, the this space feels really great with all of you. Um, anybody want to say something or ask something, please? May I be heard? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly. Everyone else, they, them. Um, it was really helpful. I think I heard you a few weeks ago say, um, tending to the field of the body. Uh, and I think that came from Thich Nhat Hanh, if I'm, if I remember. No, yeah. So the other one that I would have said if I hadn't been muted for so long, is soothing the field of the body. So there were two gatis that I shared last time, I believe. Or sometimes okay. I just share one. Sometimes I share both. So I don't know which class you came to. But the one you're saying would be the word soothing the field of the body. Of the and that okay. comes from the Buddha. Well, Those are phrases that the Buddha himself offered in the Satipatthana Sutta, the mindfulness. Okay, Sutta. perfect. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to say about that, you um, sharing that to say today, um, attending to the body or the whole body yeah. um, is was really, really helpful for me. I shared this last week in the room because for some reason that is my anchor. If I just okay. keep saying that the entire time, it is my anchor. I don't yes. drift off mm -hmm. and I just find it immensely helpful. So thank you for that. And I also found mm -hmm. that um, sitting in community, um, I could focus on it even better than when I'm just at home doing it myself. Somehow uh, being in community for whatever reason made it feel more contained yes. or made me feel more contained. So I thank just wanted to you. share that. Thank you. I'm so glad that helped. I agree. Those those gatis are really good anchors for me as well. So I'm glad that, that you appreciated those. And you can make up your own, you know. You could make up your own if there's something that speaks to you. Yeah, and Thich Nhat Hanh did do that. He would compose his own gatis, right? Like pieces every step or breathing in, breathing out. I'm solid like a mountain. All sorts of wonderful gatis that he offers in his books and he offered in his retreats when he was alive. And so thank you, Kelly, for sharing that. And I agree, whenever we can practice in a in a room with people, it's so beneficial and healing. I find that my practices tend to feel um, 
very rich in a group setting, whether it's in retreat or a, an evening class like this. Yeah, good. Good to hear. Thank you. He had this song, Thich Nhat Hanh, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. I am solid like a mountain. And I don't remember the rest, but it was a children's song that we'd sing with the kids all the time on the family retreats. And I just love that stuff. So good. So make up your own gat gatis, these little phrase like mindfulness phrases, and then repeat them like mantras. I hope that singing wasn't too bad. It's like, it's in his book. There's a wonderful book called, um, oh, it's a children's book. And it has that song in it with the, with the notes. <laughs> okay, we have just a few more minutes. So maybe one last question. Like the trees are saying, breathing in, breathing out. <laughs> Solar panels, anti-freeze. <laughs> I'm ready for the winter. <laughs> so iPad number seven says their cells were tingling. That sounds good. Oh, Denise wants to end with a chant. Great idea, Denise. Which one, Denise? Let's do Tara. We'll do the Om Namo Aryatara. It's a nice, easy one. Om Namo Aryatara means Om, I pay homage to Noble Tara. Aryatara means Noble Tara. Om Namo Aryatara. Okay. Om Namo Aryatara. Om Namo Aryatara, 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 Om Namo Aryatara. Om Namo Aryatara, 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 Om Namo Aryatara. Om Namo Aryatara, 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 Om Om Namo Aryatara, 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 Om Namo Aryatara. Om Namo Aryatara, 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 Om Om Namo Aryatara, 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 
Om Namo Tara Om Namo Ariatara Om Namo Ariatara Om Namo Ariatara Om Namo Ariatara And before we part ways for two weeks, let's take a moment to really cultivate gratitude, the greater attitude for our teachers, for the Buddha, for all of those wisdom beings who have shared the Dharma so that we can learn and practice and awaken to our inner wisdom, true nature. Such a priceless gift, so much gratitude. And gratitude to our Sangha, our community around us and digitally. Such a precious gift. And then gratitude for the teachings that the Buddha shared, the Dharma, the teachings of justice and liberation and truth that lead us out of suffering. And gratitude for our communities our family, our friends, our chosen family, and for all the being seen and unseen, and also for the land that we live on, that we tread on, that we lie and sleep and walk on. And for those who came before us, I honor the indigenous peoples of this land of Berkeley here, Liz John Ohlone, Take a moment to give thanks and acknowledgement to those who've come before and cultivated and thrived and lived on the land that is now yours. Thank you, everybody. So don't forget, next week is off, and then we'll come back the following week. So don't come to the studio. <laughs> and we will see you uh, in two weeks. Take care. Hope you have a set of happy holidays. We'll say awake holidays. <laughs> and uh, take care and be well. If you want to unmute and say goodbye, feel free to do that. Take care. <laughs>